This is what should be the last mission in uh, this particular chain, at least it, at least now. Cardassian Struggle used to be a lot longer than five missions, but... Yeah, just actually four. This is just going to Deep Space Nine, and this is just do a queue. So it's actually been reduced from like 20 missions to four missions. That's how much content's been ripped out of the game. It's at the point where there's been just as much content ripped out of the game as there has been added. Okay. Most games, I just want to point this out, make money by adding more content to the game. Cryptic makes money by ripping out their content. This is one of the reasons why I don't do, like, I don't do this very much. You know, uh, playing through, like, Star Trek Online missions. It's for my mental well-being. <laughs> because I've been playing this game since, like, he since the uh, open beta of, like, back in January 2010. Mass Effect 2. Like, I was playing Mass Effect 2 while I was beta testing Star Trek Online. Oh, what a disaster that beta was. Some of those problems still haven't been fixed. Like the little pathing problem we had in Facility 4028. Yeah, that was a problem in open beta way back in the day. Still not fixed. It's just it, it, for my mental well-being. Let's see, then we got the Borg Advance. And that is also just four missions long. Got New Romulus, which I've already done. I've already done New Romulus. I combined that with the Romulan uh, mystery. Yeah, I combined that with uh, with Cloaked Intentions. So I got those both done at the same time. So we're good on New Romulus. Most of these are literally just... There's only like two... So the Sphere of Influence, right? Okay, the Sphere of Influence. And then all the way over here, there's a step between stars and surface tension. Those are the only three actual story missions in this entire list. The rest of it is literally just a tour of a zone for to show you where you can grind for dice and marks. That's it. And then you have the Delta Quadrant, which is a nice long arc of the game. That's that's to be certain. However, you also have the fucking Kabali Front, which I will never, ever, ever do again. That was... I'm going to have to do it again, actually. God damn it. Because those are... Th there is a story there. I have to do it again because of... Because of this thing. Because of this mission. Shit. Okay, fine. Uh, Iconian War, which is uh, nowhere near as epic. Uh, at the time, was nowhere near as epic as everybody wanted it to be. Future Proof. Here's the thing. Some of Yesterday's War used to be in Future Proof. Another short arc. Bear in mind, like, the Klingon arc, the Klingon, the Klingon storyline, how many, how many is this? It's how many actual missions? So, one, two, three, four, five. Five. The Klingon storyline's five missions. Klingon storyline used to be, like, 20. It used to be, like, 15 to 20 missions. The Romulan Mystery, I've done the Romulan Mystery twice at this point. I've covered it twice. I covered the old Romulan Mystery before the remasters, and the remastered Romulan Mystery. I have yet to cover this version of the Romulan Mystery, but... Actually, no, yeah, it was... 
the, the task force operation shit wasn't in there, but I have covered this. Um, Romulan Mystery used to be like 20 missions. Cardassian Stroke used to be like 20 missions. So much content has been ripped out of this game. It's unreal. It's incredible. How much shit has been torn out of this game. And the excuse has always been, well, the level of quality isn't up to parity with all the newer stuff. But, hello, have you been, like, seeing all this shit that's been going on in the missions that I've been playing? Like, I, we, we did it live! And you saw what was going on there. I guarantee you that if I do some of the newer missions, they're going to be broken, too. Because the difference between a newer mission that works as intended and a broken older mission... I, from what I've been able to tell from playing this game all the way since 2010 is about six months. Six months after those missions are introduced, something's going to break and Cryptic's never going to fix it. There is stuff that worked perfectly that is broken. Like, let's, let's, um, let's look at uh, New Frontiers. Let's look at Jordy. Let's look, let's look at Jordy. Every time Jordy... Every time your, Jordy's head pops up in a dialogue box, he's supposed to have the backdrop of, like, the, the galaxy background because he's aboard the Challenger, right? Uh, like, half the time when you're talking to him. Eh, it's just this white void behind him. And it's a really simple thing. It's just literally a, a GIF, like a JPEG in the background. You can't display that. That, of all things, breaks. I have no idea if they fixed that. I doubt it. All right. Let's see. Progress. Yeah. All right. So let's get the show on the road. It's the last mission of the Cardassian Struggle. Of course, it's the last mission of the Cardassian Struggle. It's not in the Cardassian Struggle because for some stupid reason, they took all of that mission and, like, took it out of the main mission rotation despite the fact that their latest expansion is a direct sequel to the sequence of missions. Victory is Life calls back to this to stuff that happens in these missions. Like, like for example, there's a certain point where Quark says he's got a guy, he's got a captain who owes him a favor. This is what he's talking about. Ugh. This is what I mean. This is why I don't do Star Trek Online very often. It's for my mental health, man. Because I've been playing this game for a long time, and I've seen Cryptic do some amazingly shitty things, and amazingly dumb things, and it, it, it kind of blurs together eventually, and it just raises my blood pressure at a certain point. You know, there was a... I, I've t I tell this story all the time, but when I first started playing Star Trek Online during the open beta, I was part of a... Uh, it was just after the open beta, actually. It was the head start. It was like two people who had the open beta or the closed beta had like a two-day head start before the, re the game uh, formally launched to like uh, le level their characters and stuff. So um, I'm playing in the head start, and I see, and I joined a uh, fleet called the Space Neon Lobsters, which was the old giant bomb fleet uh, back in the day. So I joined the Space Neon Lobsters, and uh, I, pre I frequent the boards on GiantPob.com for Star Trek Online, and I see a lot of people talking about Cryptic Studios in there, and I see them saying things like, I will never play, like, I want to play this, I would love to love this, but I will never play another Cryptic game ever again. I will never play another game, like, developed by these guys ever again. And I remember thinking, that's a bit extreme. No, it fucking isn't. With, like, nine years worth of hindsight, I absolutely understand where they were coming from. Absolutely. Boldly they rode. You know what? Let's go. Let's let's go somewhere. Uh, Starship Bridge. So I don't have the intercom, like, interrupting constantly. Also gives me a chance to show this bridge off because I do think they did a good job with it.
you know, before Picard screws up the Galaxy Bridge, because it will. It will. I'm fairly certain at this point, Star Trek Online is in the same boat as the, um, based on what we saw in that trailer, Star Trek Online is in the same boat as the, uh, book continuity. I can't, I can't, like, change trophies. Huh. Uh, it's in the same boat as the pocketbook. Like, the pocketbooks, there is no reconciling the pocketbooks with Picard. Like, there is no reconciling the pocketbooks with Star Trek Online, and there is no reconciling the pocketbooks continuity with Star Trek Picard. Like, the pocketbooks continuity had a mandate, had an open mandate after Nemesis was done and uh, Paramount decided that, and later CBS decided, we're done with Star Trek. The novel authors had this open mandate uh, where they could basically do whatever the hell they wanted from that point forward. And that's what they did, is they all sort of like pull, banded together to create, uh, to continue the continuity of the Next Generation era, uh, that is Next Generation Deep Space Nine, Voyager and the movies, um, th through like relaunch series of books, which are fantastic. And, um, and so they carried forth and they like, basically like plotted out arcs of like all these like book series uh where they sort of like cross over and like uh reference each other and like and like they reference things that happen in other books and they reference things that are happening in the um their setting at the moment the the books really go into like the politics of the federation like how the federation is structured Politically, like how does a how does a presidential election work in the Federation? Like who who can run? Um, like how is it done? Uh, what is the Federation Council like? How is it? How are they? How are the representatives elected? Uh, how do like all these sort of like moving parts fit together that we've seen throughout all the continuity of that era of Star Trek? <laughs> Excuse me. The books really go into detail in all that. And they plot out large, sort of epic narrative arcs. And the first arc was, excuse me, <coughs> went down the wrong pipe a little bit. And the first major arc was, of course, the Borg. The Borg don't really exist in the books anymore. <laughs> like, they might. I don't think they do, though. I think, like, the Borg, like... There, there is a, there's a trilogy of novels called Star Trek Destiny, uh, which are basically all about the Borg. And yeah, I don't think the Borg are around in the novels anymore. So right off the bat, there's no reconciling the books with, like, say, Star Trek Online. No way. Uh, especially the way that that situation resolves in Destiny. There's no fucking way. There's also no fucking way for that to coincide with Picard or uh, the J.J. Abrams Star Trek or Countdown. So it, it feels like Star Trek Online is going to be in the same boat as the books uh, in that it is based on Star Trek Countdown. It is based off of a version of the continuity uh, written by Kurtzman that Kurtzman himself is now discarding, apparently, because Data is supposed to already be back and captain of the Enterprise E by the point that Picard takes place. And that's from a story written by Kurtzman. That's from the Countdown comic. So that's a major part of Stowe lore. That's apparently been discarded. So, yeah, I think that Star Trek Online is going to be in the same boat. It's going to be yet another alternate continuity. And in all honesty, not... Like, in all honesty, probably still going to be the better continuity um, over what is going on with the shows. I'm cautiously optimistic about Picard, but I am not going to... I'm not going to let myself get excited for it. 
Like, especially after sitting through two seasons of Discovery. Two seasons of Discovery that the person I was watching the show with, because, you know, Misery loves company. I was watching the show with somebody, and they began laughing like the Joker halfway through a certain episode. And then rage quitted the entire show. I think it was the episode where uh, Culber comes back to life through, like, bullshit space fungus magic. I think that was the one where he just sort of started laughing like the Joker and, and walked away from, washed his hands from the whole thing. And this is a person with a high tolerance for bullshit. So that's impressive. Yeah. So, like, I, I don't... I don't trust the people in charge of the franchise anymore. I don't trust them to make a good show. I think Star Trek Online is going to end up being the better continuity between the two. Not as good as the books. The books are still going to be the better, the best continuity. If you want, like, Star Trek, read the books. Enough about that, though. I've been bullshitting for too long already.